Welcome back, everyone, to another segment of the MCR. Mac and me, my name's TJ. Yes, I'm wearing a different flannel shirt. And yes, I'm trying out a new system here on a new computer, hoping to improve our video uh, quality. Uh, on to the topic. This past week, unless you've been living under a rock, you had to have heard about the Rana Romney McDaniel. I'm going to call it situation because this thing is still playing out. I don't know if people realize it, but this is not a done deal. And there are, there are so many offshoots to what has transpired here. For me being a hard right conservative MAGA guy, I'm almost finding perverse pleasure in the way some of this is playing out. And what I mean by this is NBC hires Ronna Romney McDaniel. And let's just repeat that name. Ronna Romney McDaniel. And she was she used to be head of the RNC and she she was not the best leader of RNC. I know Charlie Kirk didn't think highly of her. Charlie Kirk was making accusations. And yes, I know anyone can say anything about anybody, blah, blah, blah. But it was Charlie Kirk's belief that she was siding with the establishment uh, as opposed to his efforts of basically trying to advance the Republican effort in Arizona, because that's where Charlie, that's where Charlie Kirk is. Were you aware of that, Mac? I was. As to, as to how much that's actually true, I don't know. All I know is Charlie Kirk swore up and down. She was basically working against him. Okay. So, and, and we do know she made some, how, I'll, I'll, I guess I'll characterize it as, uh, less than flattering comments about the J six prisoners, uh, and that kind of stuff. She, I think she, she has different beliefs involving what occurred January 6th than say, uh, Mac or I do. Okay. Uh, in any event, she's no longer head of the RNC. So, so NBC hires her and less than 48 hours later, the word goes out that she's fired. But she may not be officially released. Yes, they've taken, yes, they've not put her on the air. But the powers that be, the insiders, they're not sure if in the legal definition she's been terminated. Hugh Hewitt, which, and I've said a few times before, Hugh Hewitt for lack of a better option. I, I have to listen to him in the morning on my way to work. Hugh Hewitt's in total meltdown over what has happened with, uh, with Ronna Romney McDaniel. And I will be honest. I, I find some comedy in his meltdown. Hugh Hewitt, he seems to think she's going to get legal representation, take NBC to court and so the discovery process begins, you know, of course, none of this has happened yet. This is just speculation on Hugh Hewitt's part, but Hugh Hewitt seems to think, you know, as with any legal wrangling, who knows what'll pop up in the discovery phase, you know? Right. I mean, are there any details to this as to why she would have been let go? Well, she was let go because Rachel Maddow and everyone else, and I do mean everyone else, had an on-air meltdown. An on-air meltdown. They were on, I'll say the TV, even though, you know, it's different TV viewing nowadays. But they went on their MSNBC programs and did an on-air meltdown over their bosses and I say again, their bosses hiring Ronna Romney McDaniel. And, and less than 48 hours later, the head honchos at NBC uh, said, oh, oh we, we didn't mean to hurt so many people's feelings about this. Uh, we've reconsidered. Now, and initially, they were like, so we're going to let her go. Like I said at the, you know, earlier here. In the legal sense, she may not, you know, it's, it's one of those, what Fox tried to do with Tucker Carlson. Okay. If you recall, uh, they right. took him off the air, but he was, he was still under contract. 
uh, they think something like this could very well still be in in effect with Ronna Romney McDaniel. And and this is where and, and some of this is speculation and theory, but some of this is because NBC does not want to go through the whole discovery phase of what's going to be a pretty brutal whatever between her and them. Well, you, you know what I mean? They have, they have deep pockets. They'll just pay her off. Well, clearly, I mean, you know like, anyone, she's, like anyone, she's got to make a living. Uh, my problem with her has always been how she was making that living and so much as she was uh, stabbing uh, the MAGA people like us in the back and supporting the people who say they don't even know if they're a Republican, like Lisa Murkowski, supporting those people, supporting Uncle Mitt, uh, that piece of shit from Utah, um, those kind of people. That, no, that's who she was biggest behind, the people who uh, are uniparty clowns. Well, it's for that very reason. I was, you know, in, in effect, this, all of this couldn't have happened to a better person, really. You know, she, as far as I was concerned, she she had this coming. What did she think? Can the high road Republicans be this stupid? And you know well, what? They're Maybe they they're are. Short, they're short sighted. They only see what they can get and what they want. That's all they ever see. Yeah. And, and you know what? Her high road led to a dead end, I'd tell you, you know, well, um, as it always will. I mean. The right wants nothing to do with her, and now she's finding out neither does the left. You know, it's just, and it's all these these high roaders, and we've said it a hundred times. They're just they're just posers. They're they're posturing. They want to play both sides against the middle. And like like I said, and and I'm going to go back to Hugh Hewitt, and you know, and I've always viewed Hugh Hewitt as the establishment apologist. Okay, uh, I, you know, I, I drive into work. And this guy's in a nonstop meltdown over what's transpired here. I mean, well, you talk about someone point. who can't let something go. <laughs> I used to you know? listen to him for the same reason as you, because he was the only option every day on my way to work. And uh, I remember vividly, and I'll never forget this about him, and this is why I wouldn't piss on the best part of that guy. He wanted Donald Trump to withdraw from the race two days before the 2016 election because of some accusation. Yeah, which he which he won. He won, you know. Right. Yeah, he wanted him to withdraw from the race. He won, okay. But uh, yeah, you know that's why I'm kind. That's why I say I'm finding some perverse pleasure in all of this. Uh, almost from a voyeuristic perspective, you know. Right. Uh, you got all sorts of high roaders that are aghast at what has transpired, you know. And they're, uh, not, they're not aghast at the millions coming across the border. The eighteen percent inflation rate, the four dollar a gallon gas. They're not. A, they're not a gas about any of that, though, are they? You know what? They're they're in another world, man. They're in another world. Clearly, uh, the land so, of autumn. Well, I guess I guess that's all I really got. I just kind of wanted to, you know, review, review, reflect on uh, on this. I, I'll tell you right now, this situation is, from what I heard, this situation is not a done deal. Okay, I mean. People thought, oh, hired, fired, you know, move on. And yeah, she'll, uh, she'll, she'll just, she'll get her money and she'll go land somewhere else because that's what these people always seem to do. Maybe she'll be uh, a producer of the Hugh Hewitt show or something. I, th I think more and more people are finding out. And I've noticed this in watching unrelated uh, podcasts, videos. Even people who call themselves center left are being forced to side with the right, because if you're not all in on the left's insanity, then you are all out and and slightly off topic. But I, I so remember watching, uh, I'd say maybe six months ago, watching a trigonometry video podcast video and uh and the guys, that's uh, that's Constantine Kizen and uh, Foster, and I forget his first name, but uh, they were they were uh, interviewing a lesbian who considered herself center center left, and she and she says like I got to I got to vote with the right because because I, I'm I'm not in with the left, and here she is, you know if 
un, in, an, in normal situations, she'd be with them. But because of their extreme radical viewpoint, now, now she's compelled to side with who would be their opponents. And, 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 I, and, and I think more and more people are seeing this. I would say this Ronna Romney thing is another, uh, uh, another, another piece of proof to that fact that if you are not all in on hardcore left agendas, then, then you're all out. You know, well, they can they can spew out the word democracy all day long, but they don't want any opposition. They don't want any opposing views. Uh, anyone who, who doesn't think exactly as they think is a Nazi and a fascist and a good on the list of names they'll call people. Uh, speaking of the word democracy, which you just used, and I can't remember if it was Rachel Maddow or someone else on MSNBC. I'm just we're saying this off the top of my head because because I got you know caught a little off guard on this here, but they they actually said on their program that they have to destroy democracy to save it, you know, right. and and you know so they're going to destroy you know the democracy that that's uh, contained within the Constitution to save what is in their view, the proper democracy, you know, I mean, this, this, this is how a a totalitarian state. Yeah. Uh, heck you, you had, uh, you had a Supreme court, Supreme court justice less than two weeks ago. And it might've been Katanji Jackson Brown or whatever her name is, uh, uh, do a boo hoo about how the first amendment hinders the government's efforts to protect the people, you know? And, uh, I just uh, her, her court, if she knows anything, and I doubt she does because she's a she's hired because she's a black woman. And I would I would <laughs> with, with great certainty tell you she was probably pretty far down on the list of qualified of qualified black women that could be sitting on that court. She doesn't understand what the Bill of Rights are for. Well, they're to, to, to hinder the government, not the people. Well, that's all I got. Uh, just the latest example of uh, conduct of the hardcore left. You know, uh, and uh, I hope people are taking note. I, I, people need to take note. They need to know what we're up against. And that's part of the reason why I wanted to reflect on on these events, because I'm not convinced everyone realizes how bad this is. And 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 maybe it takes something like this to 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 get get their get their attention. I, I don't know. I, I, I can only I can only hope more people wake up. Well, that's that's I, all I get. I got I to gotta think if they're not awake by now, they're probably not going to wake up until it's on a boxcar or a gulag. Then they'll wake well, up. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully we don't end up at that point, but most likely eventually that could be the situation. Now that, that's all I got. Uh, uh, thanks, everyone, for your support. Uh, and uh, we'll catch you in the next segment. As always, be safe. Watch your six. And don't tread on me.